Hi, I'm Joan Newcomb, and today's morning musings is lies and untruths. I'm doing a series of daily morning musings, and I'm using posts from my blog, Adventures in Density and Effort, as inspiration. Now, I wrote these a while back, and the world has completely transformed since then. So if I encounter anything that is out of date, I will give you the most recent information. And at the end, I will summarize the topic based on what's going on in the world today. Also, I have some special offers, so stay tuned to the very end to see what they are. Lies and untruths. The other day, I had lunch with someone who is charming and loquacious, and in the midst of telling a story, told a lie. It was a simple choice of words that altered the truth slightly and gave them the entire credit for an action that made them seem magnanimous and kind. Someone else I'd been with early in the week had talked about the same incident from my past, which I mostly remember myself, and I knew it had been entirely their idea. It was a really interesting revelation for me. I sat through the rest of the conversation viewing things in a new light. I mean, I always knew this about this person, but I had been caught up in the wonderful, warm feeling they projected where you would most willingly believe what they said. Did they believe their own story? I think so. They've told themselves this version of their history that is now their truth. And here I am in Washington, D.C., where the big news is this crisis about the debt ceiling. And the thing is, there isn't one. They'll raise the debt ceiling, as they always have. It's a manufactured cause for alarm, detracting from the employment situation. But it illustrates on a grander scale the distortions projected in the world. I've shared that I'm here with my mother who has Alzheimer's, which affects the brain in multiple ways. Sometimes the information evaporates. It's no longer there. Sometimes the facts are joined together with a distorted story. I'll watch her make stuff up and try to understand something that has happened because she doesn't remember what she was told or what really occurred. Alzheimer's people aren't lying. They really believe what they're saying. On the other hand, in order to get her to do something or go somewhere, I've had to lie to her. In a caregiver's meeting, this is called fibology. Because she doesn't remember the diagnosis, she doesn't relate to the information that she has Alzheimer's. It just pisses her off to remind her. So now I'll soften things by just saying, we're doing such and such to prevent it. We tell ourselves lies all the time and view the world through our distortions. We can perceive the same situation as a victim, a hero, an innocent bystander, all depending on the lens that we're viewing it through. In order to program someone else, tell them the truth with a slight distortion. It sticks in their reality that way. In order to recover from trauma, you have to drain the emotion from the memory. Or another way is to rewrite the story about it. The world is an illusion doesn't mean the world isn't real. The world is energy made up of layers of illusion. The greater the lie, the greater the discomfort. The more illusions you believe, the more disconnected from reality you are. When you can look at the distortion directly in its face and tell the truth about it, it disintegrates. We're afraid to do that because we'll believe that we'll die when all the illusions collapse. And that's a lie. In reality, the more we de-energize lies, the clearer we feel. As we peel away the layers of illusion, we can get to its core. And the core of the world is love. This week, notice the pictures you're viewing the world through. Tell the truth about them, or at least question them. And instead of running away from what is, stand and take a good look at it. Brick walls will become the flimsy veils that they are. Conflicts will become meaningless. Try this for a week and see what happens. This is so amazing, and I've actually experienced a similar thing with a family member that's still alive, where they told something that was a co-option of an experience that I'd had with my mother, and they placed it to them at the age of like 12. And it's like a 12-year-old boy would not know anything about their mother's period. So really, please. I talked to my mother about that when I was trying to get pregnant at the age of 25 or 26. So um, <laughs> erase that story right now. So we're actually all collectively experiencing this reality straight in our face because we have been affected by Donald Trump, who is a congenital liar and a narcissist, and everything gets distorted for his own gain. And a lot of people have been thoroughly programmed in the illusion. And what is so crazy making when you're listening to him is he will just turn around and say things that are like taking credit for changes that didn't happen during his administration but happened in Biden's administration and making the whole world as this terrible cesspool disaster which it isn't. We're in an incredible economic growth space now and even though the stock market went down a little bit last week it never went down into the subterranean tanks that it went through during the pandemic 
which was hideously botched. Obama left the White House a department for pandemics based on what they'd learned with Ebola, and Trump came in and dismantled it. And so there was nothing when the pandemic happened, and he pretty much did nothing, and millions of people died because of it. They might have also died because they were drinking bleach. I have no idea. So it's crazy making because we do know the truth. And the truth feels reassuring. The truth feels clear. And when you can stand in your truth, you also feel empowered. So what we're experiencing now is finally some people are standing up and speaking the truth and calling out the lies and calling out how weird those people are. The press isn't doing it, which is hugely irritating because, you know, they thrive on the drama and they get more money when there's clicks and they get more viewers when things are disastrous. But the momentum is happening and it's a huge, huge wave of positivity. And honestly, it's consciousness, greater consciousness and form, and we are feeling the ecstasy of that. So lies and truths. Is there anything else I can tell you based on this thing? The reason why we get stuck in lies is because we grew up being told lies. And there's an inherent lie when people look at you and think that you are just your body, which includes, you know, whatever gender you were born with or whatever race you happen to be and they don't see that you are consciousness you are consciousness this incredible capable creator of your reality and even just saying that just makes me tingle and feel empowered and feel how incredibly capable and powerful you are and how your existence enhances the world when you stand in your own consciousness you can radiate who you are and bring your beautiful unique light to the incredible rainbow of existence that we are. So if you like these videos, please click the like button and subscribe. And that way it gets the information out to people who really need to see it. And if you'd like a free sample of one of my consciousness techniques, click on the link below to the skybox technique. It'll give you an expanded perspective of your life. And if you'd like to learn some manifestation techniques, I have a self-study course called Manifesting Money and Miracles, where you can learn to embody frequencies that can completely transform your life. And if you want to know more, my website is joan-newcomb.com. There you can learn about my individual sessions, where I take a look at you as consciousness and what's going on in your life today. And I can answer any questions that you might have. And it's all recorded just for you. And if you want to learn how to do this for yourself, Manifesting Money and Miracles is a good preparation for my coaching program where I work with you one-on-one -on -one and give you specifically chosen consciousness techniques so that you can transform your life. So go to my website, joan-newcomb.com, and I'll see you tomorrow in another Morning Musings.